the last fight against Denise Moraitis. She not only can brawl and punch, but she can box, and that'll spell a lot of trouble for Dora Weber. But Dora has been there, done that for over 20 years, so it's a very compelling matchup. In the 80s, she would fight 15 rounders. She loves the action, and she's got some revenge in mind because she thought she could beat her the last time they fought, and it was a decision. Amani can fight as a brawler. She can fight as a boxer. She's got many styles. She's very, very smart in the ring. She's a massage therapist, so there are some who say she hurts with her hands and then heals with her hands. Well, inside the ring, she doesn't do any massaging. She is uh, strictly in the hurt business once the bell rings. I was very impressed with her left jab against Denise Moraitis. You see it there snapping out, and it's, and it's a hard left jab, like most all of her punches. When she's inside, she... Uh, yeah, punches to the body, to the head. She'll hit anything that's in front of her. Weber has power. She has seven knockouts. Same amount that Anani's got. Has an identical twin Cora Weber that's uh, also had an outstanding lengthy boxing career. She's like a pioneer of the uh, women's game, Dora Weber, and Look, Sister Cora. Cora and Dora. Cora once knocked out an opponent. A month later, she went to face Dora and they thought they were playing the switcheroo on her. They had to get proof that this was a different person. Cora retired. We hear she wants to come back and fight some more. Nice right hand by Anani there. You see her go upstairs, downstairs. Weber needs to drop uh, you know, that chin a little bit. Denise Moritis is in great shape physically and mentally when she gets in there. She's She's into yoga and some breathing exercises and meditation and all that. And, and she really believes that, you know, the mental part is uh, every bit as important as the physical part. Discipline, that's her big key. Closing seconds of round number one. It's a championship. It's scheduled for ten. And this was a feeling out round for both Sumaya Anani and Dora Weber. Feeling out round, but a, but a round where most of the effective punching was to Maya Nani. As we look into the corner of uh, Dora Weber. You're a, little, you're a little too far. You gotta get closer to her. Let your hands go. I get busy, right? Right? You know, it's the first round, but you know, you're in arm down. You gotta get a little busy. Ben don't play with you inside. It's not better your leg. I'm underneath. Get the body, right? Ruffle up a little bit, right? She's she gonna let you scare you. Yeah, you got her. You're out pointing her. You're out pointing her big. Big, baby. All right, lead overhand right or lead body shot. All right, come on. Keep that chin down. That was Barry Becker. He's in charge of uh, several great fighters, Eva Young, who you saw earlier. Mario Ortega, who you'll see later, but this is his star, Amaya Anani. Chip Bolton out of Kansas City has uh, one heck of a stable. You mentioned uh, some of yeah. the fighters there. Look at Anani going to work on the body. And that's what she did to Christy Martin. Those two, they just went at it. I mean, they, they and you, ever, you know, Christy's a, a tr has been a tremendous fighter too, and they just went at it. It was a war of attrition, and Anani won the war of attrition. I don't think there's any woman out there in the game who, in, in, in a war of attrition, battle of wills, will beat Sumaya Anani. You got to be fit, and uh, Dora Weber has trained very hard the last couple of months. Lost some weight, really toned herself because she felt like she had a chance at knocking off the great Anani. 14 and 0, 6 KOs for Nani. 14, 5 and 3, 7 KOs for Dora Weber. It's hard. A lot of people don't realize how you know long the women's game's been around. I mean, she's been around all for like 20 years, but the last five years, though, the game has really ele elevated to what we're seeing here tonight. Nani's such a complex person, too. Today we were interviewing her. Smitty, you were doing the interview. And she started talking about the sacrifices, and she got to her son, and she became so emotional we had to stop the interview. Yeah, she broke down and, and cried, but that's what I like about her. I like the fact that she displays different emotions. I think the great fighters, all the great fighters, you know, just demonstrate bear, uh, varying tides of emotion. Good body shot by Weber there. Big left hook 
picked though by Anani there, Dave. Anani did have the answer, and I love the hand speed from both these women. You can see the savvy of Dora Weber. You can see those years of experience. You can see she doesn't mind eating a left jab to try to throw a big one. There's a good right hand that Weber got in at the end. And Weber shouting, talking to Sumaya Anani. Of course, this is a rematch of a fight that Anani won via decision. But Weber uh, gaining in confidence. However, I think losing the first couple of rounds. Y'all get hungry in there, bro, all right? Come on, this is your fight. Stay close to her. Listen, you jab, you gotta move your head side to side, all right? Don't drop your jab, but she's going over the top on you. She's going over the top on you. Well, you see a nice chopping right there. By door, right? where we got a big close left hook. Right? By Anani. And Weber comes right back and didn't bother. She shakes it off. It keeps coming in. The Weber doesn't go back very easy, does she? She just keeps coming no matter what. It's scheduled for 10. She's got to be in, in good shape. Sandra Henderson is in Samaya Anani's corner. Let's go down there. Yes, I'm with Brian right now. You guys told... Samaya, this is her fight. Fedora's a pretty crafty fighter. What does Samaya need to do to keep control of this fight? Oh, we can't take anything away from Dora. Um, she's showing us she's showing us the things before she does it. If we keep our eyes open, we can see everything she's going to do. Um, she's giving us a lot of opportunities to hit her. So what's Samaya's game plan? Um, condition to play the point. We're in tremendous condition. We want to see if she's in condition. We're in great shape. There's, that's the point right there. We're going to work up and down. Well, we see she keeps going downstairs, upstairs. Right, we'll that's our whole game plan. That's our whole game plan. All right. Thank you, Brian. Good luck to you guys. That was Brian Spicer, who works with Barry Becker in the Anani corner. And they're talking about attrition, conditioning. Sumaya Anani can fight this way for 20 rounds if she has to. And they feel they'll take over the fight as the fight progress progresses. And, as, and even though Weber has worked hard for this fight, she was actually a pound overweight at the weigh-in yesterday. Uh, and uh, frankly, when you're 40, it's a lot tougher to go that kind of distance at this kind of a pace with someone who's 26. And I'm 40 years old. You see where I'm at? That's exactly what I'm saying. Despite I'm in great shape, you see where I'm at? I'm up here watching and talking. <laughs> but I think that, that pressure, that attrition, that conditioning, that of, of Anani, that you see it taken over now, will eventually wear down Weber. Nice right hand, lead right by a very, as Cassandra called her, crafty Dora Weber. Look at the slipping, look at the yeah. movement. Now there's no Dora doubt Weber. that Dora Weber has an awful lot of skill. You can't fight for 23 years and not have a lot of skill. You wouldn't last that long, that's for sure. And the reason you don't see many fights, 14-5 and, and three, seven KOs, is because back then there weren't any women around the right. fight. Think about uh, going back to the A's and 15 rounders, you know. She, uh, she's seen about everything you can. Look at how calm and cool, though, Sumaya Anani is. You know, she is a very in, uh, introspective person, goes inside and concentrates. She says on breathing that most people don't utilize their lung capacity correctly, and that's why she does a lot of yoga and meditation. She's also been in there against uh, her idol, and beat Naraito and Christy Martin. And that in and of itself elevated her physically and mentally. She and knows she can conquer the best of them. Well, and to show you the state of the game, she doesn't like to say this, but she'll admit that Martin might not have been the toughest opponent she's ever faced, which goes to show you where the game is going. The parity now that we will see at all levels of women's boxing. Although I would have to say that Christy was the the toughest opponent she's faced. It was a great fight. Christy, by the way, she called me from the Hall of Fame in Canastota last night. She'd like a rematch. I'm sure that fight. can be arranged down the road. But Anani has to take care of business here. And Weber's not making it easy. Look at the left jam. Left hook by Dora Weber. 
just as you can tell a skilled male fighter with experience, you can see that Weber knows all the little subtleties inside the boxing ring. Nice uppercut by Weber. Well, the interesting aspect here is I'm not sure anybody... ...an effective blow midway... ...and it's not for lack of effort. These two are very skilled at what they do. Anani trying to set up the right hand. There it is to the body and into the head. Missed with the left hook. Now look at Dora Weber just avoid the leather. But there's the right hand I'm talking about. That one got in. The intensity for Anani picking up a bit. And the patience of Anani. Although she has a little trouble, she's patient, picking her shots. Look at the defensive skills of Weber, though. Despite the hands being down, she's got the left hand going out, moving, slipping. She's getting a little tired, though, already. That's not a good sign. A short left hand got in for an audit. The total aggressor, Samaya Anani. And she won that round for sure. And Anani did something very intelligent there. She took a step back to create some room to punch. Let's look at some of the action. Weber had a, her moments, too, during that round. Using the left jab. And there's the left hook. Didn't do any damage. Speaking of hooks, though, watch Anani's. As she backs Weber up, moves the right hand, another left, and then a right, left, right. Good combination work by, you see her there, Sumaya Nani. Yeah, Dora Weber's. Blowing a kiss to you, Dave. Trying to promote the game at every opportunity. Yeah, she focuses so quickly. I mean, really and truly, she's an entertainer. You notice Anani's style, her facial expressions, her movement doesn't waver. She's very consistent the entire fight. The thing I've been impressed with is the way that Weber slips and moves, despite the fact she doesn't look as if she's that quick. Well, she doesn't have the body of a gazelle, but no. she's got tremendous experience, and she knows how to use all of this ring and utilize all the talents that she's exhibited for 20 years inside the ring. That's a lot of years. It's those little subtleties that are creating the situation where Anani can't set, set down and land a big shot. You're right. But that's okay because Anani's so patient. Yeah, she is. Look at that shotgun that, jab there. That left jab did squeeze between the gloves or what? Good left hook by Anani. Moved away, didn't get hit. But yet she hasn't really delivered any kind of a blow that would cause a problem for Anani. You know, I know folks want to see knockouts, but, but I tell you what, for women's boxing, as I said at the outset, this is this is a great display of talent and, and, and where the women's game. These are really skilled I, athletes. I, I agree with you. I think this fight is evidence of the skill involved. Watch the quick hands and the ability to throw at angles by Anani, and then watch Weber with the ability to slip and move. But because Anani has been the aggressor, and because she's landed a couple of effective blows, she's winning this fight, or it appears to us. And that's the end of that round. She's and there is some respect between those two. You saw that there. Anani's winning all the rounds. They're close rounds. But Anani's coming forward, landing the harder punches. If you and I have her pitching a shutout. You do. He's throwing the punches wide. Gotta get a little bit closer. A little bit closer to her. You know, get a little bit to hands. Not one punch out of time. There's a picture in there. Come on. It's your fight, baby. Come on. She's respecting, she's respecting you. You know. All right? That's what we bought. Three, four, five.
four punches in there, right? Move your head. And don't drop the jab. She's going over the top. Don't drop the jab. Double the jab, but she will counter it, all right? Three. Yeah. Come on. I want to go around. Yeah. I want to go around. Yeah. The word is counter more. Right, I want to go around now. Come on. Hard to counter somebody who's moving away so quickly, huh? Styles make fights. These two match up well. Another great job by a Ben and Brian Allen of matching up the fighters. They battled uh, to a decision before, and they're headed that way again. I like the movement of, of, of Anani. <clears throat> Moving, you know, just choppy little step, setting up that uh, stiff left jab that you'll see coming up here. Nobody really hit anybody there. Yep, it know, was loud, but everything was on the arms. Those shots on the arms hurt, though. Anani starting to set down on her punches a little bit more. If the arms get weary, the theory goes, they will drop. There's a good left hand by Anani. You know, if a person has a great defense, rather than just not throw punches, even hitting the arms, you know, as you mentioned, is effective. Anani's pressure, though, is, is catching up, I think, slowly with Weber. She keeps coming forward. She's very methodical. That's four unanswered blows. Not with a lot of steam, but jabs that have landed. Anani doesn't waste many punches, does nope. she? She wins every round close. You're absolutely correct. Weber staggered by a shot. Anani's working her over here on. Yeah, she is, but I'm not sure Weber's really in any kind of trouble. I think she is. That's the end of the round. And I don't know if there was words exchanged, but certainly some intense glances as Barry Becker and Brian Spicer go to work. comes forward she really worked over Weber at the end of that round coming in jab right hand misses but look at the effect of aggression on the ropes pounding away Sumaya Nani slips a punch lands a left hook misses with a left hook but throwing not a lot landed uh, you know you may be right that left hook might have really bothered her I I'm not so sure she's just not tired and you remember she's 40 now age could be a factor here is Anani Goes to work in the middle of the ring. Look at the intensity, though. Look, Look at, at that, that shot jab. jab. Anani just doesn't waver. Dave, I mean, it's 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 the same thing. And, and Christy Martin found this out. So it's relentless. It is. it is. It may not look relentless because she does it so calculated and so cool and so calm. But it's, it's, it's relentless. Oh, a good left hand. An answer from Weber, but she ate two punches before she got that one in. Oh, I like the way she turned her body there and threw that jab. Anani really knows how to use the left jab. I don't know if the mouthpiece came out of Anani or what, but I thought I saw something coming. Good uppercut by Anani. The jab followed, and here she goes. She's clearly the aggressor. She clearly has this one in control. Anani's corner told her she could knock her out as she works with that left hand. Weber in some trouble again. She's talking. That's usually a sign that means you're hurt. Look at her mouth, Dave. 
I always thought the taunting when you were getting knocked to smithereens was funny. It's a sign of frustration. Weber yeah, the Weber's hand. so tired. Did you see that? And there's a good left hand right to the chin. She's not going to make it through many more rounds. She keeps getting hit like this with that mouth wide open. Good body work by Shamaya coming right in with a body shot. She's pummeling Weber. And Nani in control. Complete of this control. IFBA Junior Welterweight Championship. Complete control. Dave to the body, to the head. You look in the corner of Dora Weber there. We'll see what they're gonna say, Dora. Here's some of the action. Look at look at Anani. Focused, looking for his shots, picking her shots. They're short, they're accurate, they're powerful, and they're very effective. She is so calm in her approach, Smitty. You can see the fatigue on the face of Dora Weber. Classic example of, of uh, trying to throw a left hand or a right hand quickly, but the body just not able to do it. I, I think that Anani can get a stoppage here if she really comes out aggressive these next two rounds. I, I really think she can get a stoppage. She doesn't go for the knockout, but she can get one here tonight. Half the time she's won, she's knocked folks out. 13-0 with seven KOs. Six minutes away from another win over Dora Weber. Weber has seven KOs, but you just can't hurt Samaya Anani. Christy, could, Christy Martin couldn't do it. Anani's going for that knockout, I think, too. Good left hand. And another. That staggered Weber. These are very accurate, hard punches. Look at that shotgun and jab again there. By a body punch by Weber. It doesn't stop Anani at all. She's calculated now. That right hand just missed, but she still paws her way back toward the corner with it. And some incredible heart. She's got an the last couple of rounds, Smitty. She just doesn't want to quit. There's a good combination by Anani. And Weber just can't find the target at all. She's so tired. Just fighting on instinct alone has really very little left. Utilize all of that experience to stay in this fight. And on a two rounds away from her 15th win against no defeats. And the only way that Weber could win would be with a knockout, and uh, we don't think that'll happen here, is again Brian Spicer. You heard the words, you've heard her a couple of times. Can you remember Anani being hurt in this fight? I, I can't remember Anani really being hurt that seriously in any fight I've side seen her. And I did her fight with uh, Martin, and I was at the Denise Moritis fight. Mouthpiece, uh, they're looking for the Dora Weber, looking for that mouthpiece, which is good. That buys her a few more seconds at age 40. That could, be, could be calculated. You know, experience brings lots of tricks. Same way as in round one. Now you're watching Ani 
and you watch her tactics and her execution. She has a game plan. She never varies from it. Well, let's go down ringside to Cassandra Henderson. Guys, what's so interesting about Samaya is that she is a boxer brawler, and a lot of fighters don't really know what to expect from her. And tonight, she came out with a lot of both. Now, I've been looking at these body shots she's been throwing all night long, and they have been doing a lot of damage to Dora. I mean, she's barely breathing up here. She's barely hanging on. And I've been looking for that KO, but she is hanging on. So much heart that Dora Weber has, you almost suspect she's going to hang on. I agree with you, Cassandra. The, the great body work by Anani, but you have to give a lot of credit to, to Weber for you know, hanging in there. I thought she looked out of it a couple rounds ago, but she's really hung in there again. That's a, you can attribute that to that those 20 years inside the ring and national audience, pay-per-view audience tonight. She's a pioneer in this game, and she's not going to go out easy, if at all. Right, and, and, and while that era, the Weber era, may be coming to a close, the Anani legend will continue to grow. And I gotta ask you point blank, you've seen them all. Weber you've seen to see a Riker. They wanna see her go down. I'm telling you, Weber's not going down. Look at her try to fight back. That's Hart. And that's the end of round number nine. And the question to you is, Anani the best in the game right now? I think so. The victory over Christy Martin, the victory over Denise Moraitis. Lucia Riker, despite looking great and fighting great at times, when she fights, has been very inactive. There have been all kinds of rumors about Lucia Riker. And right now, I'd say Anani's the best, and here's an example why. You see the heads come together there. That happened a lot against Christy Martin, and those dreadlocks of Anani hurt. They're not purposeful, but the style of Anani with that head coming in forward, she almost uses it as a battering ram. A lot of fighters have complained about that. Certainly not on purpose, in my opinion. Some, some abrasions on the cheek uh, under the left eye of Dora Weber. I give her a lot of credit. She's tired, yet she comes out. And this is the championship round, the final round. And you know what? Although some of the rounds have been close, you could pretty much call this a shutout for Sumaya Anani. Very impressive indeed. Styles make fights. I guess these two could probably fight until uh, Weber's uh, 50. And same kind of fight. Anani really battering her, though. All she is. The ring. Keeps coming forward, throws punches from all different angles. She is complete, skilled, calm, smart. She's the total package, and that's why she's number one in the world. We're in the 10th round of a fight where Anani is throwing a lot of punches, and you see the same speed, the same leverage, the same power. Good right hand, an uppercut that time. Big left hook by Anani. You know, it's a, a cliche when you sell, when you talk about a precise, skilled surgeon in the ring, but that's the kind of showing we've seen from Anani tonight. Well, it's been a dissection, and then you can see the wear and tear on the face of Dora Weber. I, and I can't remember Anani really getting hit. She's really improved her defensive skills the last few fights after the Martin fight. I think that's a product of confidence now. She's becoming a complete fighter. That's bad news for the rest of the women because she's getting better. And there she's were, already unbeaten. There were some who really thought Inani would fall to Weber tonight because they didn't think Weber was in shape the first time they fought. But Inani is getting better and better. And that's it. A tremendous showing by Samaya Anani. Is she 15-0? We think so. We'll find out for sure in just a minute. Hey, you got that a shutout, don't you? This might be a, you know, a, a virtual shutout. 
I can see this 190 the, uh, scoring. The Island girl spent some time in Jamaica, came back to start to fight. That's how she got the nickname. But really, she was born in Minneapolis, lives in Kansas City, Missouri, and is of Iranian descent. And I'm not taking anything away from Dora Weber. You see her there backing up because she, you know, has been a real crafty veteran for a long time. So this one's about in the books. Let's get the official word and go ringside, or inside the ring, I should say, to Danny Valdivia. Ladies and gentlemen, all three judges agree with the same score, 97-93. All in favor of the winner by unanimous decision and new IFBA Continental Junior Wellaway Champion, Samaya Anani. Presenting the championship belt to the winner, the commissioner of the well, IFBA. 97-93, maybe closer than we had expected. And you see Shelly Williams, the commissioner there, giving her the, the belt. One of many, I think, Anani will have before it's all over. You see the unblemished record, the seven KOs. And now 15 and 0. And this was impressive because Dora Weber is one skilled customer, I gotta tell you. You know, Anani's emotions may well waver, you know, in between fights and around fights, but not during fights. Says, I'll be back. They're vintage, but here we have a big difference in the height. And once again, Phil, in the reach. Weight is only by two pounds. Frida Gibbs comes in with a little advantage in some of the categories. Now, Frida Gibbs out of Studio City. She's trained by Randy Shields, and you certainly remember that name. Sure do. Gibbs 2 and 0. Oh. She's 5 7. As you said, Blinky, a 3 uh, three inch height advantage. She missed that right hand, Phil, and right away you hear the buzz of the crowd going, ooh, talking about Frida Gibbs, one of the leopard outfits. We see Gail just throwing overhand rights, Phil. Them overhand rights, but not finding no distance on them. Really, pretty, uh, you know, long, big, and really keeping Gail on the outside. Left-right combination. And Grand Champ is in big trouble. And here comes referee Robert Williams. It's a standing eight count. is telling the referee that her mouthpiece fell out. They're going to call this fight off. They're going to stop this fight. And Gail Grandchamp wants to know why. Her mouthpiece fell out. That's what she was trying to tell her corner man. And the uh, referee, I think, thought she said, I'm done. That could be, but there's a right hand right there that started it. And you see Frida come walking up. She runs right into a right hand, doubles up on the right hand. That right hand did land there. Ripper, once again, you see Frida, that intense look. She throws a left hook that misses. There's a right hand that lands a little, little short. She runs into a right hand, lets it go, misses there. And that last right hand is the one that landed. Gail Grandchamp is a professional loss. One of her wins by knockout. Seven pounds from Finley off. Annalise Bam Bam Colon. And in the red corner wearing cheetah colored trunks. She's undefeated in three professional bouts with two of her wins by knockout at 140 pounds from Studio City, California, fighting out of Chester, Pennsylvania, the lady they call Cheetah, Fridia Gibbs. And the referee is Elmo Adolf. Hi, ladies, the third person in the ring. Early. Pay attention to my commands out here. Let's have a good bout, shake hands, come out boxing. We saw Fredia Gibbs uh, in August in Biloxi. She went out and uh, tangled with Gail Grandchamp. It was a first round knockout. This is a former high school basketball star. Fredia Gibbs got a scholarship to Temple. 
fell in love, decided to, to leave college, went back and ultimately got her degree from uh, Cabrini College in Ratner, Pennsylvania. Went to Germany, played professional basketball for a couple of years. And Linky, she saw one of our kickboxing shows many years ago, a Kathy Long Pixie Elmore fight, and said, that is what I want to do. She and watched that fight in Pennsylvania and decided to come out west. Well, she does it well. I hope we get a chance to see a little bit more of her tonight, because in Biloxi, it was over within about 30 seconds with a big right hand to free the big uh, Gibbs through, Phil. She's a tremendous, she's very strong. If you look at her upper body, her legs, she's a very strong female fighter. Asked her where she got her nickname Cheetah. She said her nephew. She has raised her 13-year-old nephew. And he said, uh, Aunt Free, you should dress like a cheetah. And boy, she has dressed like a cheetah, and she fights like a cheetah. Yes, she does. You see Annalise Colin, though, scrapping. She's winging shots of her own, Phil. She got on the inside and just started wailing away. And they're not really landing, but showing her willingness to mix it up with Frida Gibbs. But if we don't see much movement out of... Uh, Annalise Colin, uh, it'll be lights out for a Bam Bam. Big right hand staggers Colin, and Gibbs is all over her. Now the referee is going to issue, I believe, a standing eight count, or is he? No, he's just going to back him apart. Elmo Adolph. Looked like Peter Gibbs caught Annalise Colin behind the head, and that's when the referee jumped in to separate him, Phil. That right hand counter. Gibbs. Gibbs, a very spiritual fighter. Spent a, a great deal of this afternoon talking to me about the spiritual side of the fight game. Boy, look at her, just wailing away with that right hand. And Bam Bam is getting nailed. And they're going to issue a standing eight count by Elmo Ado. And right there, Peter Gibbs introducing herself immediately to Annalise, unloading with all the shots. And that's the end of round one. No question that Peter Gibbs was loading up Phil, and that really wanted the referee to come in and give that standing eight count to Annalise Colden. Now, Annalise Colden out of uh, Finley, Ohio. Okay, keep that left hand punching. Don't Between hold Columbus it. and Toledo. Just look at the cheetah. She fights like she's double parked. Yes, she does, Phil. You know, unfortunately, some of those shots there weren't landing until that right hand there finally did land. And uh, you see the ability of Annalise to get under some of those shots because she comes in low. But right here is where Annalise turned her back to Frida Gibbs, and that's where the referee, Elmo Adolph, came in and separated the fighters. Now you see her corner man uh, really talking turkey to Annalise Colin, and she is listening intently. She comes in with a record of two and one with a knockout. Frida Gibbs on the right. She was a kickboxer before uh, taking up boxing. Have some titles in the sport of kickboxing, Phil. Four to be exact, four world titles. Bam Bam trying to fight inside. Stuck takes a big right hand from Gibbs. Another right hand, and whoa, is Colin hurt. And another standing eight count by referee Elmo Adolph. She took a huge right hand, and that bloodies her nose. And that right hand puts most fighters down. I got to tell you, Annalise Colin, without a question, she's a tough girl. Elmo Adolph said, that's it. This fight's over. I, I believe Adolph looked at her nose and said, that's a broken nose. We're going to stop this fight. I wouldn't be surprised because you took a very, very powerful right hand right on the nose, Phil. And tonight, once again, Fredia Gibbs is declared the winner by KO. She's got a lot of KOs on her record as the string continues. Grew up in the projects of Chester, Pennsylvania, was chased home from school from first grade through sixth grade. And she said, that's really when I developed the need to uh, really want to defend myself. Took up Taekwondo and uh, the rest is history. She's in there with with the top world contender, Randy Shields, working her corner. He trains her. Randy Shields, tremendous welterweight fighter in the Southland. And here we see them engaging one the other. And there's the right hands that Frida Gibbs begins to just let unload. And once she backed her up on the ropes, there was nowhere for Annalise to go. There's the right hand that was really the telltale blow and a big right hand to the body that urges the referee to jump in. Now she hardly had a chance to break a sweat. But on the other side of the ring, Annalise Colden. I'll tell you, I think she was sweating every time uh, Gibbs reared back and let it fly. Let's go now to the center of the ring in Danny Valdivia. 
Referee Elmo Adolph stops the bout, the winner by a technical knockout. In 31 seconds of the second round, Bridia, the cheetah, gives. Now there's something magical, Blinky, about 31 in seconds of the round second round. We've had two fights, both men, with Hold 31 on. seconds left in the second round. I don't round. know, this might be a case for the twilight zone if we're not <laughs> careful. Now here's when the end came. Watch this right hand. Fridia Gibbs all over the inexperienced Annalise Colon. And boy, I'll tell you what, she is just relentless. And they were really trading right hands. Boy, were they trading right hands. But uh, Gibbs finally got a couple through, and uh, Colon just could not respond with anything. And there you see the referee jump in and say, the young lady from Finley, Ohio, has had enough. Let's go now to Pedro Fernandez. Pedro? We're with the winner here, and I told you earlier, folks, we're talking about the talent latent lightweight division of women's boxing. Really gives the verse we mentioned amongst the tops. Tonight, she proved it. How do you feel? I feel fantastic, you know. It was a great fight. Um, and at least she was a pretty, pretty, very good body fight, a body up puncher. But you know, I feel really good. I just thank God that I came out victorious. Okay, now you'd like to fight either the champion, Tracy Bird, or Chrissy Martin, Lucia Riker. Make out your challenge right here. Uh, as far as Christy Martin, Christy Martin is the one I won. Christy, bottom line, I just want to let you know that I'm the one your mama warned you about. So, you know, I wish you would test me. Test me. You know, pretty much. Bold talk from the Cheetah folks, but she did look impressive then, as I said, one of the best fighters, pound for pound in the lightweight division today. Let's go back to Phil Stone at ringside. Yes. All right, thank you very much, Pedro. A very, very game, Fredia Gibbs. And she was not to be denied tonight as uh, she is after that uh, that title fight. You heard her say it. She yeah. wants Christy Martin. She wants her bad. And you have to believe that uh, that fight is going to happen, Blinky, in probably the not too distant future. Well, I can see it happening. There's uh, there's a market for some for Christy Martin to fight someone that can really fight Phil. There's no question about that. When you talk about Fredia Gibbs, uh, she is a fighter that uh, is really a. Good movement by Leah, but she needs to throw some punches. 
She's moving well, but she's got to make Hannah pay when she comes in. Well, she's not able to really throw very much at all. Hannah gets too close. There's that sneaky right hand, though, by Leo. But she turns it over and has a lot of power, though. She's just not able to really use it at all. She just gets on top of that, Hannah Fox does. And then she comes up throwing. Clearly the aggressor. Difficult rounds to, to score, some of them, but you get the feeling that, you know, Hannah's clearly the more aggressive. Although now you see Lee is a little bit more content to punch with her. The corner said you must start doing something right now. You don't want to dig a hole. Leah appears to be a bit fatigued. Has the mouth open. Hannah hitting on the break there, but if you can get away with it, why not? She is breathing openly. You can see her. Yeah. And Hannah works so hard, and yet she does not appear to be tired at all. Trains very hard in Las Vegas, and that's the end of the round. Big right hand at the end of that round by Hannah Fox. Very impressive so far, but remember, Leah Mellinger is a late round fighter. Let's go into the Fox corner. She feels like she can put her away, at least the corner. And I think uh, Leah Mellinger is far from that, but Mellinger has dug herself, much to the chagrin of her corner and very stump, a bit of a hole. I think Gina Gritty, the, uh, the only fighter greedy to stop uh, Leah Mellinger, she's very difficult to stop because she's such a good counterpuncher. Right now, it looks Oh, the momentum seems to be and has been on the side of Hannah Fox. Leah has to make her pay when she comes in like that, Dave. She hasn't yet. We've seen a lot of improvement. Broadcast a lot of uh, Hannah's fights in Las Vegas. She's so popular there. You mentioned she owns the subways. And now she's won the crowd over here. She has. By this style. Flamboyant, aggressive, go for it all. That was almost a mistake. She dropped her guard while going for that body punch. That was a good right hand. Just about halfway through this junior welterweight championship. And Hannah's fighting the right kind of a fight. She's getting worn there by Johnny Femia, but again, Lee is a, a slick fighter, and you need to rough up those slick fighters, and, and that's what Hannah's doing. You see the bullying tactics, throwing the big right hands, left hooks, right hands. That right hand snip, snuck in for Hannah Fox as well. And Mellinger, off balance and tired, appears to have lost another round. Let's go down to Cassandra Henderson, and uh, she's got some thoughts about Terry Nye and the controversy over trainers. That's right, Dave. There was a lot of controversy, especially at the weigh-in. Now, as you know, Terry Nye is in Hannah the Vegas Fox's corner, but he was in Leah Mellinger's corner at one time. And he was concerned at the weigh-in about the chest protector. He says, apparently, Leah was wearing a chest protector that was a bit too long that protected her stomach because he said she had a weak stomach. So he wanted to make sure that her chest protector was within the rules. And looking at the tops that she has on right now, we know she doesn't 
doesn't have on a long chest protector. So it was a big controversy going on. So where it stands right now, we're not sure. Back to you guys. And look at the corner of Hannah Fox. They are emotional. Well, she's feeding off that. See, that's another thing I could have used during my box. Chest protector? Chest protector, especially the kind that... I thought it was the nose protector that you needed. That, too. Right now, I have Hannah pulling away in this uh, fight by about uh, three or four points. So, Leah's going to have to start making Hannah pay like that. Uh, a little slow-down version of Hannah Fox this round. Maybe she's feeling tired. There's a big left hand, though. That cut Mellinger square. That's something that Hannah's really worked on, and they've done a great job with her left jab. Look at the, the shots there. Nice Hannah. combination by Hannah Fox. Look at how calm she is right now. Another right hand. Mellinger eating some leather. Effective aggression is one of the things that they score on. And clearly, Hannah has had control of that part of this fight. Well, Mellinger just can't figure out a way to get an angle with a good shot with a right hand. The kind of fighters that would give Hannah problems would be like a Freedia Gibbs, and there aren't many out there like that. But Leah doesn't move quite enough to give Hannah problems. Leah needs to use her left jab to try to set up the right. But you see, it's Hannah leading with a good left jab. And yep. a jab to the body. She's piling up the points. That left hand looks slow for Mellinger that time. And nothing on the right. Look at how she crowds that right hand and not allow her to have any angle to fire it. Closing seconds now around. Good shot by Hannah. Big right hand by uh, Hannah there a few seconds ago, Dave. Leah looks tired. She does. Now that was one of the things Terry Nice said, though she wasn't in the same kind of shape she used to be. She denied that, of course. But this one's fairly one-sided. At least in our minds, Hannah, the Vegas Fox, appears to be in control as we go to round number seven here in a few moments. Well, now is the time of the fight where you try to Leah on the uh, left of your screen would try to call upon a guy like Terry Nye, and uh, he's not there. Although the corner's been doing a good job, but I don't think really the, the deal is Nye. It's about Hannah Fox on your right. She's winning the fight. Let's look at some of the uh, action in the round. Hannah Fox has uh, had a good right. There's a nice right to the body, right to the head, left hook. She misses with the right hand, but digs some really good shots. Those, sh uh, those, sh those shots to the to the hips hurt too. Hannah's punching in, in bunches, and, and, and you know, uh, against a, a counter puncher that's not landing. Right. Well, that's the whole key is that the counter puncher's not able to throw, and Hannah Fox gets more and more confident with every passing round. 60 to 55. Hannah Fox is the way I have it right now. So you're, you're to the point where Leah's got to knock her out. Or at least get some uh, big rounds here. <laughs> Leah starts out this round moving a little bit better. Yeah. I thought we would see more of this type of movement. I don't know if she studied the films of the Freedia Gibbs fight against Hannah. She beat Freedia, but Hannah did it. See, Hannah doesn't like when you move around like yeah, that. Hannah says, come on. on. Right. But Mellinger's almost to the point where she's going to have to. Good left hand by Mellinger. Mellinger's is a demolition company. She works in it, and she, she needs some fireworks here. Hannah comes from a, a big family. Eleven children. She only got one by, uh, by her and her husband. That's it. But she has uh, an extended family, that's for sure. Big following in Las Vegas. Crowd pleaser. And getting better each time out. Nice right hand. Oh, sure punctuate was. that combination by Hannah. Yeah, the nice thing about Hannah was you see she went low and then she'll go up. She's not head hunting, although she windmills there one, one there and that gets a warning for holding 
she looks very poised and relaxed as uh, Hannah Fox. Lee has been in the one in all the title fights, but right now, it's all Hannah Fox. The belt at the moment belongs to Leah Mellinger, but unless something dramatic occurs, there's going to be a change. The problem when you're a, a counterpuncher and they like Leah, Much and you, know, you don't have a real big shot, the, and you get hopelessly like behind, this, okay? you know, it, it's difficult to get the knock, knockdown or the knockout. We need all these rounds like this, okay? We need these rounds. you got to keep moving. You can't get yourself trapped anywhere. No trapped anywhere. She's a dirty fighter. Very dirty. So that's what I mean. You can't even afford to get in. She just pushes it out of the ground with her head. you got to get your own jab moving. Forget about the counter punch and start being aggressive and get rocking. Okay? Get rocking, honey. Come on. She may be a dirty fighter, but she's an effective fighter here tonight. And I, and I don't think it's uh, necessarily dirty tactics by Hannah. She's doing what she has to do to win the fight. Very stuff making it very clear that yeah, Leah Bellinger has to win the the every okay. round now, and she's going to have to forget counterpunching. She's going to have to go for it herself. Anna Fox ready to go, and this is round number eight. Nice left and a right by Leah to start out that round. I've seen dirty fighters. Hannah's using roughhouse tactics, but not dirty tactics. That's part of the sport. I think part of that is to motivate your fighter, too. Trying to fire him up any way you can. Now Leah up on her toes, dancing, moving around. Another, perhaps, strategy she should have utilized earlier. She's not going to win this fight, though, by dancing nope. and moving at this juncture, way behind on points, in my opinion. Oh, nice combination by Hannah Fox. Now, you're right. And, and if you look at her record, 8-4-1, there's only one knockout in there. And the way Hannah Fox is looking now, it, it would take a whole bunch of punches to knock her up. And Hannah gaining in confidence. Oh, uh, there was an uppercut that landed from Fox. This was a better round thus far for Leah, Dave, but again, she's not doing enough to, she might get the round, but she needs to inflict some serious punishment. And now Hannah coming back in the later stages of yep. this round, landing some good body shots. Oh my, there was a stoppage and then two punches landed. Didn't bother Leah Mellinger, though. There's a nice right hand by Mellinger. You have to protect yourself at all times. It's, it's up to the referee to get involved well, there. Right. Get in and, there and, and break you that You up. sit there and you wonder why Mellinger didn't move this much earlier in the fight. Good left hook by oh, Hannah. Big another. left hand. Well, Mellinger's tough. She's got a chin, and that's the end of the round. And Hannah Fox feels it. Again, look at her trainer say, don't celebrate, it's not over yet. Come on. I want you to concentrate. Two rounds, she's done. You're the new champion, two rounds. Four minutes of fight I want. Can you do it? Hands up. She's getting desperate now. She's going to come over with the right hand. From nowhere, like this over here, okay? She's going to get real desperate. Real desperate. Just use your jab. Use your jab. On the inside. When you're inside, using a jab. Come on, okay? Okay? You can do this. You can do this. So, you're just not doing enough right now. Not enough for me, okay? Not enough for me. Come on, let them hands go. Bombs, 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 bombs. Very Stump tells... Leah Mellinger, she's got to start throwing some heavy hits. Well, Leah's stumped at this point. Pardon the uh, pun there, but yeah. uh, she can't. She just uh, can't find the answer. Don't you love Hannah's trainer? Concentrate. Get over here. Right? Good lessons from both the trainers in between their eyes. I'm sure it's been a rough time for Leah, losing her trainer like that and having to answer all the questions. And but you have to give a lot of credit to Hannah Fox. She's come in here against a more experienced, you know, woman in terms of big fights.
Oh, Please nice combination from Hannah Fox. And then she pushes her down toward the ground. That was what Barry Stump was complaining about earlier. So Bear, Muhammad Ali used to do that to fighters. Lean on him. It tires you out when you lean on a, on a fighter. It's illegal, but you can get away with it. Leah Nollinger said that she liked to fight late in the rounds. That's when she came alive, but Hannah Fox won't let her. Hannah punching in bunches. Big oh, left hook and another left hook. Doubled up left hand there. Hannah can really land the left hook right now if she'll throw it, if she'll set it up. Swelling underneath the left eye of Leah Mellinger. The crowd would like to see Fox finish her. Mellinger's tough foe. Leah tried to set down on a right hand there, but it didn't find its mark, and Hannah's in tremendous condition. Now that left eye of Mellinger's is giving her trouble, too. There's that left hook I mentioned. That's the end of round number nine. And let's take a look at that eye, if we can, in Leah Mellinger's corner. She took uh, some punishment in that round. There's Hannah Fox. It's over two minutes away from a championship. Try and put everything on the money, but look for me and throw that right hand at Will. Throw it just like you're throwing a jab, you hear me? Breathe nice, okay? You got a lot of pressure on you right now, and I know it, okay? I want to see you fight hard, okay? Come out of this son of a bitch just now and real hard, please. If you can get her out of there, it's It's got to be a knockout. Yeah, that's the consensus of the corner. And that's the consensus, uh, if you look at that score, Maybe I'm a little off there, a few points, but okay. Hannah's uh, 90 to 82 I have for a hit. You saw the kiss in the corner. Not many fighters get that. My wife didn't even kiss me after fights. The right hand from Mellinger. That's what her corner said. She had a throw with a bandit. Another good right hand by Leah. She should have started that a lot earlier. She turned over a couple nice right hands. She needs a knockout for this championship. Otherwise, it's Hannah's. Combination by Fox. One did slip in there from Mellinger as well. Mellinger landed a left hand and an uppercut, but then paid the price. A left hook by Fox. Look at the eye of Leah Mellinger. Yeah, it's swelling up starting to close. By the end of this round, she may be just a one-eyed fighter. One minute to go in this championship fight and a combination from Fox. Fortunately, it's the last round for Leah. But unfortunately, she's way behind. A left hand. Hannah just pummeling Leah. This crowd very much into it. And Anna Fox has won really them over. Hannah a little bit tired now herself, Dave, from all the punches. And that'll do it. Hannah Fox, we think, has taken the title from Leah Mellinger. We'll find out in a few moments, but we think we've got a new IFBA junior welterweight champion in Hannah Fox. Look at the eye there of Mellinger. That's a very bad cut. One on top on the left eye, one below on the right eye. 
Hannah Fox did some damage here. No doubt about it. Well, I sense that it's going to be a fun plane ride back to Las Vegas with uh, Team Fox. If it holds up, Hannah Fox will be 12 and 1. Mellinger will slip to 8, 5 and 1. Been a rough stretch for Leah Mellinger. Well, it's nice to see the embraces yeah. there with the bad blood that took place. You see the sportsmanship after all is said and done. Well, you don't see Terry Nye over there. That's yeah, for well, sure. it wasn't Nye. It wasn't the lack of Nye. It was the aggression of Hannah Fox. No, no doubt about it. She just was outstanding tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, I will read the scorecards. Judge Bruce McDaniel scored about 99-91. Judge Barry Yates scored about 190. Judge Russell Nockin scored about 98, 92. All in favor of the winner by unanimous decision and new IFBA Junior Welterweight Champion of the World, Hannah the Vegas Fox. You work for years. You plan, you sweat, you run mountains in the desert, you swim, and then you get this moment of glory. And you make subways and then sell them, and uh, she provided a lot of uh, punches here tonight, did Hannah Fox. Very aggressive throughout the uh, bout, also very poised throughout the bout. She was the aggressor the whole way, and it paid off. And Cassandra is standing by with the new champion. Yes, I am standing with the new champion. Congratulations. How do you feel? Oh, two years of work. All my fans in Las Vegas, I love you. In Oklahoma, Florida, I got to make the rounds. Reno, I just have a phenomenal fan club, a lot of support, and I'm just so, so ecstatic. You came out so aggressive, so in control. You were in control the entire fight. Did you know this was your fight? Well, I knew it was my fight because uh, Lee doesn't have a lot of power for me to respect. I mean, this is my room, she's in my room, and if she don't want to play, then hey, obviously you see what happens if she don't want to play. All right, did any of the controversy regarding your trainer and the chest protector, all of that hoopla going on, did that affect your game at all? Um, no, it did affect my game. Like I said, Allie Kruger and my husband Austin Fox, we've trained for two years. I've been talking to Terry for two weeks. A fighter cannot change in two weeks. He just did some advising for us. Um, she can blame that on uh, Terry and I all you want, but Terry and I didn't hold the pads. He didn't do nothing for me, but just be here and be an advisor, and that's just the game. So what do you think happened with her? She was the champ. What happened tonight? Well, obviously what happened, I outfought her. I punched her. I moved her. I, I was the hungrier fighter tonight, I think. She already lost one of her titles. She's on the down slope down. I'm on the way up. All right. All of your fans want to know, what can we expect from you next? Well, I got to fight in July to defend this title. I got to fight in August to defend this title. And hopefully maybe I can unify a few titles, you know? Maybe I have some, uh, well, I want to thank Event Sports for number one. Event Sports. And IFBA have just been phenomenal in supporting female boxing. And if it weren't for them, I think female boxing would be on the bottom rail of the ladder right now in boxing. And because of them, this is what happens. Great shows like this. All right. Thanks so much. Thank and you. congratulations, you champ. And we'll see you next Thank month. You. Dave, Smitty, back to you guys. Thank you, Cassandra. Obviously very excited and just a terrific performance from Hannah Fox, you know. You had it 191. You were very, very close to the majority of what the uh, judges had to say. I think we're all a bit surprised at the one-sidedness of the Hannah Fox victory over Mellinger. Well, Hannah's improved every time out. She really looked uh, good from the outset tonight, and she's a new champion. Leah fought a game fight, but styles make fights. Hannah's aggressiveness overpowered the counterpunching of Leah Bellinger. We've seen a, a lot of great boxing tonight, that's for sure. Uh, and we saw the great champion, Samaya Anani, just absolutely do her thing on a great crafty veteran in Dora Weber. And whether she likes it or not, Anani right now is the woman. We think of the man, she's the woman in women's professional boxing. A great performance by Samaya Anani. My pleasure, my friend. As always, I enjoyed it. A uh, great uh, hand for Cassandra Henderson for all the work that she did. And for all of us here, 
at Event Sports. We hope you enjoyed it. We think you've taken a good look at the future. This is the new boxing game. It's owned by women like Hannah Fox, like Sumaya Anani. And don't forget, Leah Mellinger will be back. This was a great night of fighting. We want to thank all the people at the Horseshoe Casino. And for all of us here, for Smitty, for Cassandra, I'm Dave Willotion. And we say so long, everybody, from Bossier City, Louisiana.